This is episode 150 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we're going to talk about how to boost self-confidence in four steps. Is that for you? If so, stay tuned. My name is Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist. I reversed my diagnosis of anxiety, depression, adrenal fatigue, and obesity by going beyond the food. I can tell you one thing, that willpower, discipline, and deprivation aren't the permanent solution to transforming your relationship to food. So how do you leave overeating, emotional eating, food craving, and binging behind you so you have the food freedom to achieve all of your goal and be happy now? As a top 25 alternative health podcast in the world, this is the Beyond the Food Show. This is a great moment. I wouldn't be any happier right now if I was skinnier, if my body looked different. It's truly been a beautiful process. This has been life-changing, and I am really grateful that I didn't wait another year. If you think that you're gonna come into this and lose 20 pounds and eat perfectly for the rest of your life, then it's the wrong thing. But if you think you're gonna come into this and have a life-changing experience, then it's worth every penny and more. The Going Beyond the Food Academy is the result of a lifelong journey in searching for my solution. All along, the solution was right there in front of me. And it's also right there for you, inside of you. You just want to eat normally, have a normal body, perhaps weigh less. You're looking for the solution to eat less, stop overeating, perhaps binging, maybe stop the endless desire to eat what is forbidden, the sugar craving, and you keep searching, searching for the answer as to why your body doesn't want to collaborate with you, and you've tried it all. Willpower, discipline, mental strength, over-exercising, all the diet, while shaming yourself and your body in hope that it would give you what you so desperately desire. What I desired the most, I thought, was weight loss, but really what I wanted was to fit in, to be accepted, to be loved, to be happy unconditionally. What I didn't realize during the 25 years of dieting was that suffering was not necessary, that the answer was right there inside of me. But I refused to see it and accept it because it didn't fit with what I was told the solution was. The Going to Beyond the Food Academy is a 14-week journey towards creating and discovering your own solution. Think of it as the university level course that will teach you what you need to know to finally get what you desire the most. The Going Beyond the Food Academy is a lifetime program that will show you what you need to heal why you eat because that's the real issue and we'll teach you a new way of engaging with food from a place of intuition resulting in a brand new way of how to eat the outcome of the going beyond the food academy is what you eat becomes normal easy and simple ditching dieting and becoming a normal eater So if you're ready to step into a new version of yourself, be empowered by me as your teacher in our amazing community to make the change you know you need to make. Head over to stephaniedodze.com slash academy right now. So the academy has helped me figure out, like you said, feel it, don't fight it actually know that if I feel my feelings, I'm going to survive. It's going to be okay. I can sit with those and nothing bad is going to happen to me. Hey ladies, Stephanie Dozier here and it is early morning today. It is Wednesday, August 22nd and it's 7 a.m. I'm recording this bright and early in the morning. I don't think I've ever recorded a podcast that early, but there's a lot going on right now in the Going Beyond the Food team. I just came back from a trip from California, both 
for me, visiting and getting to discover the California desert. I went to Joshua Tree and a bunch of other desert, but I also had a conferences, the Mindshare conference where I mingle with a bunch of online health practitioner. I came back and I had a surprise for my accountant. I had some taxes to do and then I started something really cool. So the Going Beyond the Food Project is coming back, ladies. So last year was our first time, huge success, change a whole bunch of perspective for many of you. So we're bringing it back this year, October 5th to the 18th. You'll hear more about that in a few weeks. But I started to do the interview with the expert for the Going Beyond the Food project. So that's been going on this week as well. And then yesterday, I work through the scholarship application for the fall 2018 of Going Beyond the Food Academy. So over 40 women applied for the scholarship program, which is a full ride to the Going Beyond the Food Academy, including the exclusive package, which is one-on-one coaching with me. So I read through, I thought through all the application, which by the way, were awesome. It was very difficult, but I picked a winner. Her name is Sarah. Sarah is a mother of three teenagers. She's a single mom on a single income with three teenagers. Unfortunately, the father figure is not in the life of the children or the family. And there's a lot of stress in Sarah's life. And she's been struggling with a relationship to food for a long time. And what made me select Sarah is the fact that she recognized that her behavior as a mom is affecting her children. But not only that, she's teaching via her behavior to her children. So granting her the scholarship will not only affect her, but it will affect her three kids as well. So this scholarship program is going to Sarah knowingly that it will affect four people's lives. So I'm very excited to work with Sarah 101 and have her in our community. And we got her started actually with a bonus. We got her started with Claim Your Food Freedom program, which is the self-study entry level to the academy program that we have because we have about three weeks until we start the academy. So I wanted her to get started and learning the principles so she can start applying it. So it was a bonus that we give to her. So sometime today, she'd be getting an email from us with Claim Your Food Freedom program that will get her ready in three weeks to start the academy. So I'm very excited to work for Sarah. Thank you for all of you who applied. Keep watching your email because there's going to be some help going your way for all the scholarship applicants beyond the regular process. So, So that's another thing that's going on in life. And then... We're getting ready for the Academy to open for the last time in 2018. It is the last time for this year. So we're going to open the door for registration on August 30th. But I have been encouraging all of you and all the other women interested in joining the Academy to put themselves on the wait list. So I have a bunch of women that are committed to join the academy that are sitting there on the wait list. And we've been working with them specifically in helping them answer their question tonight, August 22nd. But yesterday, for you that are listening to the podcast on the 23rd, we had a Q&A session with just the wait list women. We gave them exclusive access to the academy. I've shown them the behind the scene, the course, the bonuses, all the additional tools and material that the student have. I walk them through that and I answered their question. And alongside with the wait list, those ladies are getting an early registration and a bunch of bonuses. So if you are listening to this, like, oh my God, I want to join the Academy, but I'm not on the wait list. You still have time. 
because we're not starting the early registration until August 26th, today being the 23rd. So get your butt over to the website, stephaniedoze.com slash academy, click in to join the wait list, and then you'll be able to see all of that stuff and get early registration and the various bonuses for the ladies that are on the wait list. So this is everything that's going on in my life. But I wanted to record this episode this morning because it's a very interesting and important topic. It is how to boost self-confidence. And that's a follow-up to show 149. So if you've listened to the bonus episode, so 149, how to heal people-pleasing, you heard me say that I was going to do a show on self-confidence. And the reason why those two things are like kind of tangle and tangle together is for you to be able to stop the behavior of people pleasing, you gotta have confidence in yourself. So I had to address both, did not want it to put it into one show. So here we come with this episode 150, talking about self-confidence and the confidence in expressing your emotion, your opinions, your viewpoints. So you don't have to constantly agree with everyone around you and not be able to be you. Because when you are quote unquote people pleasing, it's typically because there's one of two things happening in your mind. It's either you have low self-confidence or low self-esteem or both, and you resort as a coping to please people around you as a coping mechanism to survive through life. So I would say that this episode is a fundamental in healing people pleasing, which result in healing your relationship to food, because many of us use food to combat those negative emotion that stem from behavior such as people pleasing, low self-confidence or low self-esteem. So we're going to debunk number one, what is low self-confidence? And then How can you work on boosting your self-confidence in four steps? So it's not going to be about putting lipstick and and (laughs) posture or how to groom yourself to fake the fact that you have self-confidence. Because unfortunately, that's a lot of the stuff that's going on out there. I'll say put some red lipstick on and be proud to be a woman and then you're going to be more self-confidence. That is BS. That is not the way self-confidence work. That is just, again, external resources to fake with something you don't have inside of you. Like putting red lipstick on to increase your self-confidence, it's like following rules of a diet. Both things are the same. It's not by externally faking something up that internally in your head and in your heart and in your spirit, you're going to be that emotion you're trying to fake externally. So if you are aligned with me and you want to boost your self-confidence, let's do this girls. So number one, what is self-confidence? Self-confidence is the feeling of trust in your abilities, in your qualities, and in your viewpoint, in your judgment. We typically increase our self-confidence from experiences in our life that we have mastered. Self-confidence can also describe as a positive belief in the future positive belief in the future and in the things that we wishes to accomplish. So looking forward and thinking that, yes, we can do this. And when we are more self-confident, we have more happiness. 
When you trust in your ability, you end up being more successful. Therefore, more happiness is derived from that. You feel better about you, about your capability, about your skills, and you get motivated to take action towards achieving your goal, your wishes. So it's kind of tied together. So by working in your mind and your body to be more self-confidence, you're going to achieve more. So you cannot wait to have achievement to feel self-confidence. You have to do the reverse. You have to work on being, feeling, trusting, knowing in your ability, in your self-confidence, and then success will come. Now, before we get into the fourth step, I want to make a difference between self-esteem and self-confidence. Both are not the same. Self-esteem is an evaluation of your own worth. Self-esteem is the lenses, the glasses that you see life through in how you reflect and you determine your relationship to the world based on how you evaluate yourself. Often, what I see in women is the lenses of I'm not enough, and that's the glasses they wear all day long, and therefore they evaluate the world around them from the perspective of them not being enough. Self-confidence, as I said earlier, is the trust in your ability and your skill in achieving a goal. Now, self-confidence and self-esteem sometimes are together, meaning that some people have high self-esteem and high self-confidence, but it's also very possible that one has high self-confidence and low self-esteem. And we see that in celebrities, right? People, singers and actors who are very confident in their skill of acting or singing, but they don't have self-esteem and they end up using drugs, using alcohol, using coping mechanism because they don't think they're enough. But that doesn't mean they're not self-confident. Now, we see that also in our student, in our program, what I call the type A personality. People like me, right? That's who I was. I was highly self-confident in my skill. That's how I perform so highly in the corporate world. But I had very low self-esteem. I kind of use my self-confidence to make up for my own worth, for my own low self-esteem. So difference the two, they don't go hand in hand. What we're going to talk about today is self-confidence. And that is a huge piece in our program, specifically in the academy. And in the way we teach it in the academy is lenses through which you see life. And we teach it under the model of lack or growth mindset, right? Lack being, it's not possible for me. Like I cannot be successful because I don't have enough of this skill. I'm not a good public speaker, so I cannot do a career of inspiring people. I am not good at math, so I cannot be an engineer. I'm just giving you a bunch of examples, but that's the lack mindset versus someone that wears the glasses of growth, right? Someone that says, yep, I know I can do this. I know I can achieve this goal. That's the growth mindset where everything is possible. So it's as easy as deciding which classes you put on. Now, I say that, that it's easy, but if you're struggling with self-confidence, you're probably not believing me, right? But it is. It is that easy because self-confidence is a skill. 
It's a skill that can be learned. If you work for it, if you practice, if you learn how to do it, and you're willing to change and practice, self-confidence can be learned. That's the power of mind work, like the mindset, the mental, emotional body. You can learn this. But you have to be willing to learn. And, and I want to say I've learned that from a colleague of mine, Irene Lyon. Learning is the first step to healing. So if you want to heal your self-confidence, the first step is learning how to heal it. And here's the thing. You're not going to learn how to heal self-confidence on social media or on magazine, because that's where they're going to tell you to put red lipstick on to have more self-confidence, which is BS, right? We've already put that out. That kind of stuff is not something that you learn in school. It's not something you learn in society, because guess what? When you learn how to be more self-confident, you become empowered. You stop being dependent on others. You stop being dependent on program and product and all that stuff. You become your own thinker, your own source of power. And the way we've modeled society right now, we don't want that. We want people that are followers, people that are victim, people that don't believe in themselves. So wherever you're going to learn from about being self-confident, I'm going to teach you four the four steps here. But beyond that, I would recommend that you read, you take some program, take a course, be coach to really help you understand how to do this work and do the work with something that can help you. So here we go. Ready? Step number one, speak well to yourself. You know that tape that plays in your head? where you have a conversation with yourself, right? We do that probably hundreds and hundreds of time in a day. So when you're talking to yourself, do you say to yourself that you are self-confident? Do you say to yourself that everything is possible? Do you have faith in the word you choose to speak to yourself that everything is possible for you? right? That you speak it loudly or that you're silent in your head, it has the same impact on you. Your self-talk is your number one source of feedback. So what is the quality of your talk? And do you talk to yourself in stealing self-confidence and possibility and power? So if you've never done this exercise, I heard that from one of my friends yesterday doing an interview for the Going Beyond the Food Project, Sean, take a piece of paper tomorrow or today and for half a day, three or four hours, start writing down all the thoughts that go on in your head about yourself within that block of three hours. And literally like, Be honest, write it down or make a check mark every time you have a negative thoughts and then realize the quality of your self-talk. So it's going to take discipline. It's going to take willingness once you've realized the quality of your self-talk to change it. So every time that a negative self-talk comes up, you're going to have to catch it and rephrase it. Reframe it that we say in the academy, right? Reframing our thoughts. And then it's just wash and repeat until it becomes a normal behavior for you. So that's step number one. Step number two, visualization. And it's kind of a follow-up to self-talk. Visualize, imagine yourself as a confident person. What would that look like for you? In the academy, we teach that through a concept called hope right? Developing hope in our life. Seeing the positive outcome that is possible for you, right? What would being self-confident look like? It's like playing a movie in your head. You likely are already playing movie in your head if you have low self-confidence, but the movie is negative. 
The movie is focused on all the things that could go wrong with you and your life. What I want you to do is to take that quote unquote negative movie and flip it around. Allow yourself to visualize to play the movie of all the possibility. For example, if you're struggling with people pleasing syndrome from episode 149, what would your life look like? If you weren't a people pleaser, if you were a free thought thinking individual and you would live your life based on what you, your belief about life is, and you are not worrying about pleasing people around you. So what would that life look like for you? So that's step number two. Step number three, give yourself permission not to be perfect. Many people that have low self-confidence, see failure as something really negative. And if that's you, how do you perceive other people that are successful? Do you think that they've never failed? Do you think that they've never made any mistake? Do you think that everything is perfect in their life? No. People that are successful have failed and have made a ton of mistake. But the difference is those people have allowed themselves to not be perfect. They've allowed themselves to not be successful the first time around and keep trying. A great example of that is an author, J.K. Rowland. So Brene Brown often gives this example about J.K. Rowland with Harry Potter. She went to 12 publisher pitching her book before the 12th publisher said yes. 11 times she was told no. She could have seen that as a complete failure and quit after the second time, says, I'm just not good. I'm never going to be able to be published with that book. It's never going to happen for me and just quit. No. She had self-confidence. She believed in what she had written in those books and she kept marching and kept trying and kept trying. She was able to embrace fear, stress, and anxiety and not see it as something that she can't handle. She learned to see failure, fear, stress, anxiety as something positive. That's self-confidence. Step number four goes right in hand with not being perfect is a concept called self-compassion. So to be comfortable with not being perfect comes self-compassion. You need self-compassion to be okay not to be perfect. So people that are highly self-confident have self-compassion for themselves. And if you don't have self-confidence, you're likely one of those person who think that by beating yourself up, by being tough with yourself, by shaming yourself, you will change. You will get better by being tough on yourself. And that's the whole pattern of dieting and diet mentality and all that stuff is depriving yourself, suffering to get to what you want. So... If you've been a long-time dieter, I can probably assume, there's good chances anyway, that you have low self-confidence because you believe in the model of suffering, of beating yourself up, of shaming yourself to get to what you want. You are not self-compassionate. So you have to start practicing being kind to yourself. And a great place to start with that is body image, right? Right? Being self-confident with your body, being accepting of your body, being compassionate with your body, being confident, not having the self-talk that is shaming. Great place to start and to practice. So instead of going around (laughs) shaming yourself, imagine yourself talking positively about your body, looking at everything that your body has done for you, right? If you're a mother and you have fat on your belly, God Almighty, that belly produced a child. 
how can you shame yourself and beat yourself up for that belly when you created life? Your child came out of that belly. How about if you were grateful for your belly? What would happen with your relationship to food? What about if you were confident about your body? You were confident that you aren't your body image, right? Many people, when they see me public speaking, they're like, oh my God, you look so confident in your body. And yes, my body is not a tin body, but I know that my body is not me, right? That's not who I am. That's just my vehicle, my shell. So yes, I carry myself tall. Yes, I have a power posture. Yes, I put clothes on me that fit and make me look good. That's how I am self-confident with my body. If you think that by not buying yourself clothes, by looking without judgment like a rag, because that is the punishment you need to give yourself so you're going to lose weight, it's going to backfire on you. And it's likely backfiring right now because you have low self-confidence. So be compassionate with yourself. So these were the four steps to boost your self-confidence. So let me recap. Speak well to yourself. Visualize your self-confidence, your success, your confidence. Speak well, visualize Give yourself permission to not be perfect. Stop seeing failure and mistake as something to be avoided. Be comfortable with fear and anxiety. Step number four, cultivate self-compassion for yourself. And a great place to start is with your body image. So there you have it, ladies. Four step to boost your self-confidence. Now, remember, this is a grassroots movement, the going beyond the food. So I want you to share this episode with a woman in your life that needs to hear this message. Share it via your device. Share it via an email. Share my website. Get the message out to the world. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast because I'll be sending all kinds of bonus episodes, just like I did with episode 149 with how to heal people pleasing. When I get this inspiration, it's just going to come out. We're going to have a bonus episode. And if you're not subscribed, you'll never know that we have released an episode. So subscribing is easy right in your device, iTunes, Stitcher. And what happened when you're subscribed, as soon as I release an episode, you get a notification saying, hey, new episode available. And my episodes are full of value. So it's going to impact you positively by seeing that notification. So subscribe to the show if you want to get all those bonus episodes. And we may have another bonus episode this weekend. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Something I think I'm inspired to talk a lot about body image. So there may be another one coming very shortly. Ladies, I love you. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to hang out with you on the next episode. Do you eat for other reason than hunger? Maybe eating because you are stressed, frustrated, bored, or because you think you deserve it. I struggled with craving, overeating, and even binging on healthy food, no matter what diet I was on. Keto, paleo, organic, whole food, nothing stopped it. And maybe you feel the same. Tired of dieting, over-exercising, and yet another fad program. Or maybe you're overeating and binging and wish you could just be a normal eater. I thought I was alone. I was sick and tired of being a victim of my food urges. Who wouldn't be? Do you feel stuck with your eating and body right now? I want you to know one thing. You are not alone. You aren't broken. If food hasn't been going the way you've planned, know this. It is not your fault. Sadly, most 
women keep repeating the cycle of yo-yo dieting because they rely on old strategy like restriction, discipline, and the worst one of all, willpower. Perhaps you believe in eating more intuitively and would love to trust yourself around food but are afraid of trying because honestly, you just don't trust yourself or worse, you've tried before and you fail. So that's why I want to peel back the curtain and show you exactly how I changed my relationship to food and the one of my client going from overeating, binging and emotional eating to food freedom. And quite frankly, it is completely different from anything you've heard before. Claim Your Food Freedom is a 21 day journey to dissolve the hidden blocks the emotional blocks that keep you stuck and finally stop sabotaging yourself with food. Claim Your Food Freedom is a four step mapping process that will take you from where you are now to food freedom. You see, everything will change the moment you are willing to see beyond the food and understand why you eat. It's about transforming why and how you eat so what you eat becomes easy, natural, and peaceful. Health, well-being, self-confidence, satisfaction, and success are all byproduct of you looking beyond the food to unlock your food freedom. Plus, I'll coach you on specific roadblock that may get in the way from you being free from food. Probably the things that made you fail before. The constant hate on your body, the all or nothing attitude, AKA perfectionism, fear of failure or even shame. And lastly, time management. If you are ready to step into a new version of yourself, that eat normally and is at peace with food and maybe even your body, head over to www.claimyourfoodfreedom.com and I'll see you on the other side.